The federal government of Nigeria has been actively pursuing economic reforms aimed at improving the business environment and fostering sustainable growth. Now, notable among these reforms is the removal of fuel subsidy, foreign exchange liberalization, and of course, tax harmonization, which government says uh, would be uh, been instrumental in addressing the various challenges that have hindered the country's economy development, of course, before now. But let's understand more about these reforms and, of course, the impact on the masses. I'm being joined by a former presidential candidate, presently the special advisor to, on economic affairs, the office of the vice president, Dr. Tope Fashua. Dr. Fashua, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining the program. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Yes, I'd like to start this way. Before now, the argument of removal of subsidy and liberalizing the exchange rate or the foreign exchange market has been a conversation we've had. Professionals have supported this move. But some are saying now that it is like there was no adequate plan to manage the shortfall of some of this uh, initiative instituted by government. How does this come to you? Well, thank you very much uh, for the question. Um, I think, of course, uh, we all know about these two very um, momentous uh, reforms. The first one being the removal of uh, subsidy. It was just something that had to go. Apart from that, um, the, um, the part, the, you know, when the former government was departing, uh, there was no provision in 2023 for any fuel subsidy in the budget of 2023. So. What the president, uh, President Tinubu, said uh, on May 29, uh, 2023, as he was being sworn in, was basically to say, you know what, I mean, there's no provision for this. I uh, may not be willing to consider uh, new subsidies and so on. So let's move on. And I think I've uh, tried to explain this in several fora. The president, being uh, an accountant himself, like many of the people he's working with now, myself inclusive, um, it was basically thinking about, you know, let's, let's do this on a clean basis. What, whatever it is we sell as petroleum, uh, crude oil, can we get all the proceeds in? And when we get the proceeds in, we don't want any stories about, oh, when we were coming back, we had to use some of the money to pay for fuel subsidy and all of that, uh, which led at some point to Nigeria not even getting anything whatsoever. I remember a former, uh, minister of petroleum saying that, uh, if the, um, if the um, uh, crude oil should, price should get to $100, that we're going to be in serious trouble. And you can see that today, crude oil is selling for close to $91, $92 on Brent, but it seems to be working for Nigeria because we took that step to say, you know what, let's move away from that regime that was unaccountable, uh, you know, even though it was going to be very difficult for that to happen, but at least it, it did at some point, it did, and uh, we stuck to that, and, and you know, we're finding ways around how we will ensure that we don't go back to a subsidy regime where we were using every, uh, every gain from crude oil sales to, to import, uh, to import uh, uh, you know, for petroleum. And luckily, um, as things stand, maybe in a couple of weeks we'll be able to get some of our local refineries to, 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 to work. Uh, this, this kind of thing is called like a sort of shock therapy because except you take that very definitive stand, you may not get the other parts of the economy to work. For example, the local refineries, like the, 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 the private refinery as well, you know. And not only that, Ngote refinery is about to get started. Some of the modular refineries as well are positioning uh, to themselves to be able to add value. And I think when that happens, we're going to be uh, uh, getting good at that. And of course... The other reform around, um, you know, uh, uh, the other subsidy around the foreign exchange management, you know, it was just high time uh, as well because uh, we had a scenario where we had official dollar at 461 and an official at close to 800 at that point in time, sometimes more than 800. And of course, as we've seen so far from the revelations from Central Bank, uh, we've seen a scenario where... Uh, uh, there were so many shenanigans going on, and it was becoming quite uncontrollable uh, because of the slackness of, uh, you know, that regime, that, 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 uh, that dispensation, you know. So uh, it was a case of, look, should we continue to get people getting dollars from the back door at the central bank at 461 and offloading at 800 or 850, thereabout, you know, in the unofficial market and smiling to the bank? And, of course... Uh, the government decided that, look, let us close this gap. 
and let's see what happens. Of course, it did not. It wasn't quite easy in the beginning uh, because when the gap was closed, the the, the, the black market rate also shifted uh, to the right. You know, uh, which meant that uh, this, the official rate had to also close up again. But you can see what has happened since then. Um, even when the rates went up to 1,900, for the first time ever, we're seeing such a rally in the Naira Valley. And contrary to what many people believe, that anything that goes up in Nigeria never comes down, uh, we've seen a scenario where, for the first time ever, uh, we're seeing such a rally. Of course, it did happen in 2006, uh, 2007, when crude oil was selling for $140 per barrel, uh, under, I think, uh, Governor Soludo was in Central Bank then, you know, and, uh, you know, we saw a scenario where the, 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 the dollar, uh, dollar Naira ratio, uh, rate, uh, moved from 127 to 120 and then to 114 or there, but then it started moving, uh, back in the other direction again. But this time around from 1009 and today we're talking of 1001, with uh, prospects of getting to 1,000, perhaps 900, 800, people have, people have not seen this kind of thing before. Indeed, um, you know, so it's basically about the management of the currency. As I've always insisted, you know, no country goes home uh, to sleep uh, watching its currency being traded by all sorts of elements and so on. Now you can see that Nigeria has been able to beat back some of the traducers who have been playing with his currency for too long. I mean, we're talking about, uh, we know what's going on with, you know, I mean, there had to be a move against the guys in the black market. There had to be a move against the guys in the crypto market who have been playing shenanigans and all sorts of uh, play uh, on, on the Naira. And, of course, this is play, it's paying out for the first time ever. And those who have speculated, hoping that the Naira was going to go to pieces, are now regretting their actions and perhaps... They will have to regret even a lot more. Dr. Fonshaw, before I move to the workings of the central bank, which many have commended in recent times, uh, Dr. Cardoso gradually sorting out the debts, backlogs, uh, selling FX to BDCs uh, and all of that, I would, I would follow up saying... Inflation is what everyone is trying to address, the central bank and, of course, support from the fiscal side. But now electricity tariff is also high, band A, uh, are to be paying higher. So how do we manage inflation in all of this, in your understanding as a professional economist? Right. So anyway, the point is that things always uh, work together with a little bit of patience. We're going to get through this. And, of course, uh, the president, His Excellency, uh, President Tinubu, has also said in one of his last uh, few statements uh, at one of the iftars that he hosted, that uh, you know, just the way we have brought the Naira dollar rate, rate down, uh, we're also going to get the inflation rate down. And of course, it's on its way down. In fact, I'm in the vanguard of pushing that even it's going to come out, come down faster uh, than, than, than many people expect. I saw a World Bank report that says that by the end of this year, inflation is going to be 24%. I would say that we should target 15%, and I believe we can. Uh, the, with the same thing that the truth was that nobody, none of those uh, very big organizations, well, World Bank, IMF, including the Goldman Sachs of this world and many people that we look up to, uh, none of them predicted that we were going to be able to get the Naira to this rate at this point in time. None. Um, you know, I remember when JP Morgan predicted, I mean, did a certain analysis report and said that Nigeria actually had uh, basically $2 billion left in its reserves. And many Nigerians actually jumped on that. Unfortunately, uh, non-patriots, there are so many of them around uh, the country, and they said, oh, we have only $2 billion left, and the country could not survive more than two, two months, because that $2 billion was going to be only, uh, you know, enough to, to finance two months of imports. Look, this is like seven, eight months after then. Nigeria is still surviving. We have never defaulted in any of our obligations, especially whether it was trade, even our debt obligations. You can't imagine how much Nigeria has been able to clear in the last few months, uh, you know, in terms of servicing its debt, sometimes paying down some of the debts to IMF, to World Bank, to China, to India, to Germany, to, you know, most, we've cleared everything that we needed to clear as scheduled. And I'm talking about $3.07 billion around, uh, around uh, March, uh, about $560 million in January. Another $1.18 billion was cleared recently in, uh, just by the end of March. Again, you know, and, and so this is going on as if there's nothing. The central bank is not talking too much now. 
as is exactly what we expect and what we want from Mr. Cardoso. He's not always in the media, in the press, and facing and talking so much about stuff. You know, just like we're in this kind of Alan Greenspan era in Nigeria, where the central bank acts and, and, and you know, his actions and indications uh, is what matters most. People are thinking and, and, and looking at, okay, what was the central bank uh, intending to do more than what he's saying? For example, when the central bank says, look, we'll be selling dollars to uh, BDCs, grow the chain, who have been bought, brought back into play, the way we, we also, uh, you know, advise that, that we're going to be selling dollars to these guys at 1,101 naira to one dollar. That is an indication. It's a signal into the market that, look, this is where the central bank is going. If we be, we, the week before then it was 1,250, the week before then it was 1,003, and now we're talking of 1,001, who knows what's going to be next? You can see that speculators are in deeper trouble than they ever imagined. I can tell you that this is going to last for a while. So in terms of inflation, uh, we're talking about 31.7% today. I'm, I'm of the opinion that we can get it down a lot faster. It's going to be a combination of several things. So the central bank is doing its own bit by um, you know, increasing interest rate levels. That is meant to get people to put, to put money in the banks by way of deposits rather than, uh, rather than chase dollar, rather than, uh, than other, other ventures and so on. That is also meant to attract uh, you know, if dollars from abroad. At least foreign portfolio investors, they are coming back. The central bank has issued uh, quite a few uh, treasury bills, you know, open market operations recently, all of them oversubscribed and all of that. So... They're doing that, and, you know, the, the textbook says that the higher the rate, the lower the inflation. There's going to come a time when that their action is going to have to take impact. However, on the flip side also, of course, is the fiscal actions as well. There's a lot more fiscal discipline going on now. And apart from that, there's also the cooperation between the two, fiscal and monetary policy. But perhaps even more important now is the role for the Nigerian people. And I've always pushed this. Uh, the Nigerian people must now be able to even negotiate better with the people they buy things from. If you have uh, increased your prices stratospherically, because say, oh, see where the Naira is, the Naira is 1,009, it's going to 2,005, it's going to 3,000. And look where the Naira is today at 1,000, 1, perhaps 1,000 Naira. So that means that you have to be ready to reduce your prices. I mean, look at the price war that's going on in the aviation sector. And I understand today, uh, you know, one of the airlines crashed their prices on economy from Nigeria to, to UK from 1.9 million to 600,000. So I think that we want to be able to see some of this. You know, maybe not that drastic, but what we need to see some of this, even the price of rice. I've been doing a bit of survey myself in some parts of Nigeria, some parts of Lagos, Ibadan. People are buying bags of rice at 55,000, 60,000, 65,000 now, down from 95,000. And so, um, you know, I believe that the Nigeria Bureau for Statistics is also looking at this. And in their next survey, they're going to see that, look, I believe that even if we do a proper survey this month, we should be able to begin to see inflation really slowing down, you know, at least marginally. Maybe if we're lucky, we get it down to 30% before now beginning to see the, 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 you know, the real downturn in inflation. Like I said, if we're able to close this year at 15% or 13%, that's not bad because uh, the, slower, the, slow, the, 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 you know, the lower the inflation rate, the more the activities of government is going to be able to show in terms of uh, economic growth. Because uh, the GDP growth that you see at the end of the year is actually the real GDP growth even on a monthly basis or the quarterly basis as well, you know, that's the real GDP growth, meaning that inflation has been backed out. It's a lot more difficult for you to declare a GDP growth when inflation is 31%. But when you have like 13%, 14%, and you're doing a lot more in terms of repositioning many of the other sectors, then you're going to see a scenario where your GDP uh, will be rising faster. I'm not one of those who believe in all of these predictions of 35 3.8%. Uh, GDP, I think that we should be growing a whole lot faster. That is the promise of Mr. President. That is the promise of renewed hope. And of course, in spite of the initial hiccups and challenges, I believe that we can actually begin to achieve that. Even the one trillion uh, dollar uh, target, you know, if if we try hard that we can do 800 or 850 uh, million dollars out of uh, one trillion, that's a good that's a good mark. And I believe that we're going to be able to achieve this. Uh, brilliant. I, I I like to take it up from there. The 
plan to get to a one trillion dollar economy as in uh, said by the central bank governor the banks will play an important role in this and that's why we see a plan to even recapitalize them but my question really to you would be do you think there needs to be a reform in the banking or financial space in our country we see ratings agencies say our banks are stable uh, they are doing pretty well but what's your take with regards to that and are they doing what they should really do to support small businesses. NPR is about 24.7%. Just... Yes, NPR at 24%. You know, again, remember that as inflation comes down, uh, what, what the Central Bank will begin to do immediately is also to lower the NPR, you know. So they begin to lower, I mean, the MPC uh, under the auspices of the Central Bank. They begin to lower the NPR. And, of course, if we're able to achieve this precipitous drop in inflation, and I think that we can, especially when the people also do what they need to do. We, the people are the ones paying for this increased uh, price of everything. Therefore, they shouldn't just sit back. Don't say, well, I didn't vote for Balatinubu. They let him go and deal with it. You are the one paying. And so if you believe that there's someone around the corner who is taking advantage of you, you're the one that will haggle with him and say, you know what, even if you say, you know what, this is my old stock. Maybe old stock will not last forever. Otherwise, you go elsewhere. And you know what, there's also going to be a price war in some of those markets, even the food market. And apart from what I'm saying also is that, I don't know if you're going to call this fiscal, the Ministry of Agri itself is being more astute in terms of uh, getting the data, you know, how productive is our land? Remember that food inflation is 37.92% as we speak, which is egregious. It's not what we should have. You know, so this Ministry of Agri is also moving, doing its own bit, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, um, Elijah Kiari, you know, doing its own bit to ensure that, look, let's know the productivity of our land. What are we producing? How much of wheat? How much of maize? How much of sorghum? How much of all the staple foods that we need? Okay, and where are these things headed? So some people are hoarding uh, some of these things with a hope to, uh, to, to, you know, to, to make a profit. They are hoarding so that maybe when the prices go up, they will now bring them out and sell. Those guys are also in trouble. And mind you, that food does not last forever. Even though we may not have all the required standards here, that some of them that even when they are bringing those things, nobody should buy them because they are maybe more than a certain period of time in keeping. Some people who were hedging against the dollar, against the Naira, also went and bought a lot of commodities and kept, believing that the, the Naira will always fall. Now, I tell you what, they have already made a huge loss because they may have bought those commodities when Naira was maybe 1,005 or uh, 1,008, and now Naira is 1,000. So they need to get these commodities out. So I think that we are also going to see a scenario where there will be a deluge of commodities coming into the market. And one of the things the Ministry of Agri has done is also that some of these entities that are buying in bulk, for example, the World Food Program, the World Food Program buys in the market in bulk. Why should they do that? So we're saying that, look, guys, if you know that you want to buy, I mean, you're buying to go and give refugees, but non-refugees cannot even find food to eat. Even, and you're storing them maybe in the hope that more refugees will be created in different places. That cannot be right. So we're seeing a, a lot of actions being taken, and we're getting the real data, including, you know, anti-smuggling, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, initiatives that are being taken because loads and loads of trucks, uh, you know, of, of huge trailers and so on, move out grains from this country to other countries. Now, we're not saying that people should not trade, okay? But you know what? We want to have as much as possible documentation. Proper NXP forms, which is export uh, forms, should be filled out. We we'll know where those goods are going. We track their sort process to be sure that they are coming back here. Uh, because otherwise, Nigeria has been used as a guinea pig for too long. You know? So I think that we're seeing a, a different scenario uh, playing out here. So NPR is where it is. The banks are doing what Remember when the banks were capitalized? Uh, the last time they were capitalized, I remember, I think it was 2005. In fact, that was when I left the banking sector. But at that point, we we're talking about 25 billion uh, naira. It looked big then, but what is 25 billion today in in dollars. And banks being what they are, you know, of course, banks are rated globally. How many of the Nigerian banks who are doing incredibly well, declaring very good profit, are in the top, top 10 in Africa? Even in Africa, most of the, the top five in Africa are basically uh, South African banks. So I think they've been encouraged to, to reassess, to reposition. A lot of them were playing the global game, but hey, you can't play the global game at the expense of your own country. 
Um, you know, we had all these issues with whether banks were keeping open positions, how much was it, were they selling to customers, were they buying dollars for their own positions, and so on. In fact, one of the same things that Central Bank has been able to do is get some of them to sell down. Uh, maybe close to $3 billion have been sold down to customers that need them from those open positions, which they resisted a little bit. So now the game is changing. It's never easy when you ask banks to go and recapitalize. But again, remember that the value of Naira is a lot lower than it was in 2005-06. Okay? At that point in time, maybe we we're talking about 120 or 120 Naira. I remember that in that time, 2006, 5, 6, you know, the, dollar, the pound was 250. Today, we are seeing a pound that's about 1,004. Today, you know, it got up to almost 2,000, more than 2,000 at some point. Just a few weeks back when it was very nightmarish for everybody. But today, 1,004. So just, the, you know, we're talking about a five-fold, you know. So whatever it is they have now, you know, they think about five-fold. And, of course, they've been told to reposition. Some of them are doing international business and have been asked to go and look for 500 billion uh, naira, you know, and let's see how that goes in, in new injection of capital, not to reposition and just do some balance sheet management and say, you know what, well, we have reserves here. We can just represent the reserves. So, well, we see how that goes. It's not going to be easy. But uh, like you rightly said, the key thing is... What are the banks doing for the economy? How are they helping manufacturers, industrialists reposition this economy, you know, key into the renewed up agenda, which is a, is a very ambitious agenda? You know, when you talk about $1 trillion uh, economy, that's about, I mean, we're talking about, we're still around maybe 400, 400 billion now, let's say 450 billion. Uh, you know, you have to juggle the uh, Naira rates and so on. The stronger the Naira gets, the higher that GDP is. That's the way it works, you know? And the Naira is getting stronger, which is fantastic for us. So, uh, and of course, there's going to be a bit of rebasing, I believe, from the, the MBS, you know, uh, to, to, you know, which may position the, we may see that the, 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 the Nigerian GDP begins to inch up quite considerably because the last rebasing was um, about 10 years ago, you know, and the economy is changing. E-commerce, all of this stuff that our boys are doing in the creative arts, Almost none of them is captured, as is right now, you know, uh, all these kids making. You won't believe how much value uh, those things are adding, uh, skit making, comedies, even those pranks that you see. You know, they employ people. And beyond employing people, some of them are getting, creating content, getting paid. X, uh, Twitter, former Twitter, pays people for content. For those who are big on Twitter, you know, I've seen them being paid. In Naira, I mean, it comes in in Naira, but I'm on the, you can always uh, convert to dollar and all of that stuff, you know, from X, from YouTube, from Google, from uh, Facebook, from all of those platforms. So now is the time to look at how the economy has changed and how we can take it forward. So the banks themselves are being compared. Remember also that at some point, uh, the retail segment of the market was taken over by fintechs who were the ones lending people 100,000 Naira, 1 million Naira, because the banks were then too big. Uh, to engage with those numbers of people and that segment of the market, they felt that it wasn't uh, where, what they wanted to do. I don't blame them, you know, because uh, they've actually positioned as investment banks, our commercial banks, where they are actually basically positioned as investment bank. The business has changed. So perhaps we're going to see a, another initiative where we'll have a rush of uh, call it fintechs, call them microfinance bank, call them whatever kind of banks. But we need people and banks that will continue to engage with the, uh, the grassroots, uh, continue to assist with financial and economic inclusion at that level, you know, so that we can have a robust economy. Well, that's our time. I must thank you so much, Dr. Tokwe Fashua, special advice on economic matters to the president, office of the vice president. Now, we'll keep a tab. I've put some of your projections down. Let's see how it plays out. I will have you in again to do an overview and evaluate all of the projections about inflation, GDP growth, and, of course, our value of our currency. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. Thank you very much. All right, up next.